Think of yourself in a cage in a room full of people. And the cage is soundproof. You feel uncomfortable, maybe thirsty, or hungry, in need of some assistance or wanting to ask a question. Think about how frustrated you are when nobody hears. No matter how loudly you shout your requests inside your cage, none of the people in the room with you can hear. Now imagine instead of a cage you are trapped in, it is your own body. That is my life, an intelligent mind imprisoned in my body. Imagine being restricted to grunts and pulling people whenever you need anything. Imagine people making assumptions about what is going on inside your head. Imagine having no way to tell someone that you are sick or in pain. Imagine that you are super and exceptional when it comes to intelligence and having no system in place to express it. For years I was hardly human. one of our community teachers walk in. Everybody, I want you to meet Gabby Bowner. Gabby's also gonna be one of our community teachers. My name is Gabby. I'm glad to be here today. I think that the most effective means for us to find out about each other is to type. Thank you for inviting me. I am definitely participating. I hope you use our lives to tell the world that even though we are not able to speak that we had a voice. We get fully started on January 8th. Our goal for winter quarters to really learn the content, not only about autism, but about inclusion. Uh, because the outcome, as you all know, are gonna be six films that we're gonna make. Students are gonna be put in teams or crews, film crews of three people, and they're gonna be assigned to a specific community teacher. Um, I didn't expect to learn what I did from this class. I came in with a lot of knowledge about autism, I thought. And then everything kind of changed, surprisingly. Um, it's really challenging working with someone who doesn't speak. Especially when um, their aides aren't there, we can't have conversation with them. So it's really hard to kind of make that connection with them. I was wondering if I can make myself understood it's hard and I get it wrong more than I get it right right now. Um, what else did I say was going to happen on the 28th? You guys remember? Lunch. We were lunch. Yes, we're serving lunch. That's a good one. We're also going to have you feel what it's like to have to type to communicate and be non-speaking. So you're the first 30 minutes of your meeting with the community teachers, you're not allowed to speak. You're not even allowed to do things like, oh, I messed up, or just none of that. It's non-speaking. And then what we're also going to do is to make it hard for you to motor through your typing. So guess what? You're going to be wearing a ski glove. OK, you can only use one finger. You're not using all 10 fingers to type. Someone said, hey, how's your project going? 
you'd want to be able to say, oh, it's good, I'm doing it about education. But they'd have to wait for that letter board to come out. And they'd have to, and they'd have to sit patiently and wait for just even a casual answer of hello, or how's it going, or, and so you can see what it really takes to, you know, to sit there and answer that question and the pressure you might feel of people watching you. But at the same time, you want people to value what you have to say. So people understanding that it takes some time and to be patient, to give that space for it. And that's how you get to know a person. So, yeah, that sort of gives you just a tiny, tiny taste. <laughs> Getting my hands sometimes to hesitate and hit the right letter is to really make all the stars and planets into synchrony. As dedication to support having more connections is always the goal. I can only work on my part, which as you are seeing, takes all necessary focus and energy. All that I feel is, can I help long enough on my own? Otherwise, my support person will have to step even more into a critical, intimate moment that instantly will vanish. I think I remember when we all had the community teachers and we had the pizza party. And then I believe Anna's mom was still getting pizza and talking to someone and Anna was sitting by herself. And I wanted to sit next to her just so that like someone would be there with her. It was just like, hi, Anna like pizza time and then she just kept eating her pizza and I didn't know what to follow up with that and I had no idea what to say like where do I access that education you know it's like I have to take a disability course at UCLA but in that moment I felt was my presence enough like my body sitting there next to her enough or should I have made conversation and I thought really uncomfortable, but I felt good at the same time for sitting there until her mom came. She took first courageous step to say hi. Please tell her not to be different outside. Best to man up and coolly come over to say hi. Even if my communication perfectionist partner is not there. Um, who wants to go next? Okay, so where are you at with the plan right now? Okay, so we changed our approach to the film completely. Uh, we will be focusing on us actually building a friendship with Gabby as like the main part of our film. I think there's so much more for us, more meaningful film that we can create, uh, showing on how we've been inclusive and how we can actually continue and grow that and give people ideas on how what they can also do. I do want to say here. She wants to talk to my mom. Not here. Oh, hi. Hi, can we come in? It's home. Yeah. <laughs> Can we take off our shoes? Gabby, I wanted to ask if you have a pet. I see you have gold. <laughs> On the floor. <laughs> Like with Gabby, like every time I see her, I get nervous, but then I realize like when we're talking and then when we're hanging out, like it's fine. <laughs> like I was like, I don't know why I was nervous. You know, we're over here having a great conversation and we're hanging out. It's just me in my head. And it's just like, oh, I don't know. Like as we're doing this project, you know, we have to learn and we're communicating. Yeah. Cause you know, like Gabby types to communicate. Like the first few times we didn't know how to communicate. 
I feel a combination of excitement and nervousness. I worry that I won't be able to communicate what I want to them, such as certain inflections that comes naturally to speaking people. Moderating the discussion is Elaine Hall, founder and creative director of the Miracle Project. Joining Elaine are Neil Katz, a self-advocate and community teacher at UCLA, the University of California, Los Angeles. Neil presents nationally and will be participating in an upcoming TEDx talk on autism. I was a wild and uncontrollable person all wrapped up in anger and frustration. I was utterly lost. Now imagine that one finger and utilizing technology can change all of it. In one moment, everything changed. I immediately became a thinking person to those outside of my inner circle. I began to gain respect and recover from the solitude embedded in my head. I was not only given a voice, I was given my voice. Because I still need a communication partner to support me, some people are skeptical about authenticity. However, I am me and I often have a bigger vocabulary than them. Thank you, Neil. I really like Neil. And yesterday, I was just asking him when everyone was gone and we were in the house. I was like, oh, am I going to see you on the 23rd? And he immediately responded to me with hand gestures, but I didn't know what he was saying. And he was telling his, um, his uh, communicator to help him out. And he was like, one second, one second. And I was just like, ah, oh, he's trying to respond to me, but you're not helping him. So I, I understand that frustration. So I waited every question to be answered first to ask the other question because I didn't want to bombard him with 10,000 things and yeah. When my communication partner was not available, it made me frustrated. I wish that I could have been able to talk. I'm just throwing out ideas, so. So Neil, do you have an incident, perhaps, where you had a situation that you had to deal with law enforcement and you were uncomfortable with? More comfortable? What about the do, have you ever yeah, in, encountered law enforcement or <coughs> interacted with them? <laughs> yes. And was it a good or a bad experience? Was the experience good or bad or something else? Good. It was a good experience. Okay. Okay. Hey, Adam, 24. Show me code 6 at... 3672 uh, Manchester Way. So when you were <laughs> misunderstood by your neighbor, you said, uh, when you were walking around the community, did you uh, meet law enforcement then? And He's pretend. No, 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 no. She's just going to pretend and act the scene. No, thank you. It's pretend. Later. Yep, real quick. We're going to do it real quick. Neil's uh, response to the question was, for me, being safe kind of worries my mind. Just think what might happen if I did something wrong, like stealing. If I take something by accident and get arrested, I would not be able to defend myself. That mess would be hard to clean up. Thank you very much for that one, Neil. It is good to listen to the stories of autism from the mind of autism. It's a chance for a rare voice to be heard. That's great. There is just a touch of sappiness, though. It is easy to look at the struggles of your subjects and whisper about how brave they are for fighting the good fight. It is harder to share a laugh with them or tell them about your dog or ask if they know who is playing in the basketball game that night. Every time you engage with your subjects, there is this idea that they are going to impart some wisdom or show you a miracle of perseverance. You are going to see them overcome something and you are going to be enriched by that experience. Sometimes I wish you weren't making films about us. Sometimes I wish the class was just about talking to us and spending time with us. I wish you didn't have anything at all to gain from us but a person to talk to.
I got so caught up in all the videos and the deadlines that I didn't really take enough time to get to know Dylan. Felt like I was using him more as a resource rather than really try to understand him. Up until today, I thought I would never have friends. You have been so kind. Thank you for welcoming, <laughs> welcoming us into your home and into your life. Your yeah, hair is thank so you. sweet. <laughs> You're gonna make us cry. <laughs> thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. We look forward to, to really getting to know you more. Yeah. And build this excited. Me too. The class has changed my life. I have loved every minute of this course. It is the type of college courses I yearn for. I eventually felt comfortable once I introduced myself and got to know my classmates. The reason we all came together really was through this documentary. Even if we are trying to be inclusive, inclusivity is difficult regardless of. Mm -hmm. But I think even just filming, it'll even give us an insight on like the faults that we have. The interesting thing about our class is that, you know, while we are making these films about inclusion, we are having to practice inclusion to create the films. And the theme that we have realized throughout this endeavor is that inclusion is really hard. Our films that we're making are not going to be, look at this is what inclusion looks like and it's really awesome and you can do it too. And we want to acknowledge the difficulty and that everybody has to be bought in in including people who are non-speaking and believing in that to be able to be contributing members of, of these communities. Because it is hard doesn't mean that you should stop trying to reach that goal. Assume I was honored to be a member and participant with other autistic people. We actually taught the UCLA students about autistic people's abilities and showed them that we are smart. They can do better by being more compassionate. I wish for more inclusion. I believe the real inclusion begins after this course has ended. I felt included. Each of us has a part to learn to interconnect within ourselves. We could have made more effort to communicate. We do our best with what we can. Nothing has to be said for us to connect, maybe. And not just sharing that space together is powerful enough. It takes time to build that relationship. Patience, like taking that time to really listen. Practice and being in the class more and just having more opportunities to engage with the community teachers. Interact with those who are different or talk about topics that may not involve you, but does involve the general community. They are hard topics to talk about, and I think we need to talk about them.